Hi guys, welcome back to Sports with Mono and Mono. I'm Jim. I'm here with Steve. It's May 30th, 2020. Good Steve? Morning. Good morning, everybody. Time is flying when we're having fun, right? Yeah, it sure is. May 30th. Hope everybody had a nice Memorial Day weekend last week, and yeah. today's a beautiful day out. It is. So, um, listen, let's let's get right with the elephant in the room. This is a crazy time, not only with the pandemic, but also the kind of the social things that are going on. And listen, I'll give you my, my, my two cents on the whole thing. It was unbelievable. It was unnecessary and it happened. But the results and now the rioting and stuff, it's, it's not only in Minneapolis. It's of course, it was New York, it was Brooklyn, setting police cars on fire. I mean, not the reaction you want, it, you know, but I get the situation, and it's, it's explosive, and it's volatile, and it's coming at a kind of a crazy time. We're still in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic, and um, that's my only thing. Listen, it was absolutely wrong, and justice will be served in this case. There's no question. Um, but, you know, the reaction, let's, let's just tone it down. Let's come together as people and do it the right way, you know. Right. I mean, you know, people seem to... That's fight. our political spin. That's my political view, and I don't want to go deep into it, but because I don't condone it whatsoever, the actions that led to this, the George Floyd incident and so forth, but, you know, especially at this time, let's see if we could pull it together in a peaceful manner. Yeah. I mean, again, everybody's seen the, the, the footage, and, you know, obviously um, it speaks for itself. It, it's a, a tragedy that should never have happened and but it has and yep. you know listen <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say on it right. an unfortunate incident but uh but know, sports with mono people, and mono people need, people need to dial this but, back exactly we, the, the violence isn't going to help anybody it's actually hurting people that were already hurting from the pandemic right <laughs> businesses that were shut down now they're gone yeah there's, there's a different way to do it, and I'm not here to say that I know what that way is, but there, there has to be a better way than people, more people losing their lives. Anyway, that's... Now, the only thing I knew that I, I took away from this is now I know to get a hammer and a sledgehammer and, not, and, and knock a cash register. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so disturbing, this footage. It, it's just, it, it's unbelievable. Right. But, Let's move on. We're here to talk sports, and hopefully, uh, yep, everybody's know. well and recovering hopefully from this. Hopefully, everything calms down soon. And things uh, are opening up. Things yeah. are opening up. So, our first segment sponsored by Coriano Trucking of West Havistraw, New York, and uh, I'll be seeing my sponsor tomorrow. Um, and we we thank them for their continued support. Absolutely. So, if we're going to talk, let's let's we'll talk about the state of affairs for all these leagues that are. You know, they're debating, right? We know the NHL is coming back. But from a baseball note, I thought it was cool. Today was, uh, in 1935, Babe George Herman Ruth played his last baseball game. That's interesting. And the week before, he hit his last home run. But he also hit two others in the same game. He hit three home runs a week before his last game. How about that? Wow. <laughs> So he hit his 714th home run? Yes. Against the Brooklyn Dodgers. Okay. And it was, you know, that's a monumental thing because we worship the man, right? We did. Number three, you know, you say number three, what does that mean? Babe Ruth, we, right? You know, we, when we grew up, uh, we had this real big poster, black and white, of the babe. Classic right? pinstripe from, uniform. From the back, the number three, right? And I, I, I think he was set. Yeah, he was, I think it was uh, his yeah. retirement thing, maybe. Yeah, right? yeah. But uh, just a classic photo. He had the hoarse, raspy voice. He was literally dying. He, he died like six weeks later or something. I, actually, I don't know exactly how long, but yeah. he was on his way out. He was on his way out. So. But as a baseball player, no. the numbers are just ridiculous. Absolutely. But we're old enough to remember Hank Aaron. Yep. Uh, hitting number 715. Off, like, off Al Downing. And it was early April, right? Uh, Dodgers and uh, right. and the Braves. It was uh, at Atlanta. And, you know, Henry Aaron's still with us. And, uh, yep. you know, he is the all-time king. But I just wanted to certainly mention that George Herman Ruth, it's a milestone. And 
we think he's one. And certainly, if you say top five baseball players of all time, uh -huh. if his name's not on the list, then you don't know what you're talking about. Top three. Right. If not the, the number one. But I thought that was interesting that he hit three home runs in, in, in a week I'm before his final I'm not game. surprised anything about the Babes numbers. Right. <laughs> But I just wanted to certainly mention that. It was How many hot dogs did he eat on his last <laughs> game? <laughs> well, then <laughs> he eat two hot dogs for each home run, so that was, that was half a dozen. <laughs> son, run out and get me two more. <laughs> Where's the sauerkraut, son? <laughs> Give me a root beer, too. <laughs> anyway, so let's move on. So while we're on the baseball thing, it looks like baseball is... It's in jeopardy. It sounds like it's in jeopardy. And it, is, it, is it greed that's driving this, that it's in jeopardy? Yes, it's called money. Is mm -hmm. it all about the money? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all, all about, about the, the money. money. <laughs> right? Another Seinfeld reference, George. Mm -hmm. um, holy cow. Holy cow. But anyway, we talked about the Major League Baseball Players Union being no nonsense. There, it, it, is it all about the money? Yes, it's all about the money. Of the sports coming back, Major League Baseball may be more in jeopardy than the others. I still think they'll pull it off. However, I will say there is a chance that, you know. So what is it going to be, a 100-game season? No, nah, they're talking 82 now. Now it's 82. Yeah, but the players want to get paid. The players, I think, want to play 100 because it means more money. But, you know, both sides have to... Uh, is an 82-game baseball season worthy of even complaining? Exactly, I mean, that's another debate. Right? <coughs> I know we'd miss it and, and so forth, but... Well, you figure the minor leagues, you know, like rookie ball, A ball, all that stuff, you know. It's probably a equivalent, right, if you think about it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But if they're going to play, they got to get off their asses. Uh, I just don't think 82 they games gotta be worth you know, playing. I, the I really clock don't. is ticking. And what was always unique about Major League Baseball, that it was a 162-game season, right? Yeah. April to October. That meant something. It was endurance. It was, you know, through the dog days. and so. Sure. 82 games. Ah. So, listen, let's touch base then. What about it? Looks like the NHL. Well, well, back, they all well, came. well, back to baseball, Tuesday, they're supposed to, so the players... Gave a counter proposal to the owners. Right. I think the owners today said, you know, well, <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. So they were supposed to meet Tuesday, but. Like, meanwhile, the clock is ticking. That, that's the point. Right. So it might be in jeopardy. We shall see. Yep. The league has canceled the se uh, season before, I think 94, strike year. Strike year. year. Right. Um, so it's not unprecedented. Mm -hmm. But getting back to the other two sports, it seems like they have got the momentum where. I think it's just all about logistics right now. About you think the NBA is that close? Because I was. I do. I think the players are are on board with playing. Uh, we talked about Disney Village as the host big, host city. Yeah, it'd, it'd be like an Olympic Village type of thing. But Steve, know? isn't this just becoming just like a, a kind of a, a random playoff thing? Even in hockey, right? Do we really need twenty four teams in there? I mean, the twenty four teams. Worthy of playing in the playoffs? Hockey. These guys grind it out for 81 games a year. 82, whatever it is. Right? Yeah, I, I, I mean, mean, again, I, I don't have any qualms with it. I, I mean, again, it's all uncharted territory. And, uh, yeah, are there some teams uh, going to get in the playoffs that... Wouldn't have gotten in the playoffs. Yeah, and are there teams that were, you know, seeded, you know, maybe, you know, fifth seed and they secured, you know, basically their spot and now yeah. they got to do this play-in, uh, you know, stuff. But, hey, it's just part of the package. Bottom line is if they're going to play, the NHL and NBA seem to be maybe a few weeks out. So they're just, they're, well, like, they're, they're working on the logistics. And there was one thing I was thinking about from the NBA and I saw um, there's a lot of international players in the NBA. Oh yeah, that are that are actually home, right? And there's still these quarantine rules, right? You can mm. come from Czechoslovakia or Croatia or whatever. You got to sit out two weeks, right? So until these guys come with an agreement, these guys don't know when to come back, and then they're going to be out for you know and miss another two weeks of practice and so forth. So there's logistics, obviously. Sure. Which, but you're right. Is it all about the money? 
Yes. And it's again, all about I mean, the it's all about the testing, too. And, you know, all these players are going to be tested constantly. Which I don't think anybody's barking. That's not some of the contention between no, why they part keep these of the owners and the players, players saying, you know, we're going to be, you know, you know uh, the threat of exposure to corona. Hence, I want my $28 million salary. I mean, for example, it's going to be this prorated thing. So I'll give you the biggest example is Mike Trout, highest paid in the league. Trout normally would make $37 million based on his new contract. If they do an 82-game schedule, I saw the number prorated. Was he gets 17, 19? 19. Okay. 19. So okay. we buy on that? Yeah, but that, you know, it is what it is. I get it. Right? But then you got the Blake Snells from a couple weeks ago who makes $10 million and he says, I'm not, I'm not playing anything less than, than my full salary. And I could, okay. see, and I could see the owners on, in, in Major League Baseball saying, look, let, we'll cancel the whole season. You know, right. I could say, I, if I don't have to pay Mike Trout $37 million for this year, then that offsets the losses of, of ticket revenues, merchandising, all that kind of stuff. Right. right? Yep. So, <laughs> and the other thing too is, is Major League Baseball is going to expand the rosters, and I think it's going to be fifty players or something eligible. That what during the regular season? Yeah, for this eight, for this, you know, they're they're, they're going to have oh uh, during the pandemic recovery. Yeah, yeah. well, they're going to have an arsenal of players that'll be eligible that you know to uh, to play. But okay. again, like we said, it's unprecedented. But Major League Baseball has really got to start picking up uh, the negotiations here if they're going to get this season off. Okay. Well, look, I, I wanted to bring something up. We talked about, you know, um, what is coming back, right? Horse racing's coming back. Casinos are opening and, and so forth. NASCAR so, started. Um, li- li- you know, literally, there's been a couple uh, races at least so far. Um, so, but compared to what it is like a, f- a football game with fans in the stands and no fans in the stands, NASCAR, these guys are going 180 miles an hour. They, they, believe me, the last thing they can see is a is somebody in the stands, right? So that can go off without a hitch. The horse racing, the Belmont's going to be June 20th. Okay. And we talked last week, and I said my my early favorites for the race were Nadal yep. and Governor Morris. Yep. I just found out today, Nadal, out of the race. Mm-hmm. I think, Retired. I think, uh, I think uh, the governor is pro- going to be the pro- prohibitive favorite. Uh, no, not according to the board right now, but I think he's going to get a little bit more support. But that was my early prediction. I'm, I'm, but I'm that's going to happen, fans or no fans. I'm going governor right now. Okay. No need to even for me to uh, pick anybody else at this point. But that was a marquee horse, Nadal, not, you know. Sure. Not, not running in that, but that's June twentieth. Okay. We talked about last week. I said I wasn't so sure eight, whether it was the first three or second weeks week. out at that. Right. So um, there's going to be a triple crown, like you said. It's just going to be in reverse order. Yep. That's all. So um, bizarro world, <laughs> isn't it? It is. It, in it, every aspect. And we talked about it last week, and I keep thinking because again, I drove by a. a you know, a recreational park with 12 baseball fields and there was not a person on it. And it was crazy to see. And I know it's heartbreaking for me. Like I said, for your son and these yeah. kids that are always, these are the moments you live for. You can never get back your freshman year in high school, right? Now his, his football uh, career uh, is... Yeah. Uh, okay, I, I read a, uh, a brief story this morning. Um, remember Alex Brown? He was a defensive uh-huh. end. At the Florida, he played for the Bears, and he had a nine-year career. He was a good player. Yeah. His son, like Tony, um, freshman at Furman, right? Furman University. Highly recruited kid, baseball. Anyway, you know, Furman has canceled their baseball program. Not only that, canceled, and about canceled, 12 other sports. Canceled the season. Done. Right. Baseball is done. Lacrosse is done at Furman due to the they just they can't do it. So I'm just saying, just another example of and you're seeing it all across the, all across have, the he's country. He's going to have to transfer and find a new home. But again, you know, you count that like we talked about my son losing his eighth grade year. We talked about seniors in high school, right. college seniors. It's it's really gut wrenching. It is. It stinks. <laughs> It really does, but uh, again, driving past an empty field at this time of the year, yeah. there would be normally 20 games going on. And then the other part of that story was Bowling Green had to fold their baseball program too, and there was, there was a really good pitcher on there, but the story was, you know, they're hitting the road for their road trip, and 
wherever it was, March, they're on the bus, they pull over, they get, you know, McDonald's or whatever it is, and, and you know, and then they see, they hear the coaches on the phones up front when they get back on the bus. Game's canceled. Uh, yeah. Turn the bus around, we're going home. All right, they're and guess home. what? That's it. Yeah. Game, set, match. I saw it a, a lot of times, a lot of schools, um, Cutting back on programs, you know, from 30 Division One programs to 29. It means like the golf team, right? Sure. Tennis team. Some, this is hey. happening all over. Those are the you better believe it. The crazy effects of what's been going on. Correct. So, um, but listen, our next segment is sponsored by Lynch Motors of Manchester, Connecticut. Connecticut. And uh, I know that mag state. I know the president of Lynch Motors is quite anxious to get back on the water with his boat up in Narragansett. I so I imagine so. <laughs> I don't know how that's going up there. It seemed to be loosening the reins a little bit. So we we thank Mike and hope him and his family are well and get that boat out there. Sure. <laughs> you know. Thanks, Mike. A um, couple other things. I saw I, I saw something pretty funny. We because uh, you and I the guy's a character. Ed. Ogeron from uh, LSU, right? Sure. Raining. Ed Ogeron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was a funny clip about two years ago. He was trying, they were trying to interview him on ESPN, and these guys are making noises and stuff in the gym. <laughs> and he went back and screams at him. But he's a massive guy, right? Yeah. You ought to see him now. I saw this clip. Out power walking now, he looks like Schwarzenegger, uh, you right. know, five years before Arnold drove off the cliff. Right. <laughs> but it was pretty funny. Nah, I like Ed Orgeron. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, he's well respected. He now, is. Now he's a national championship uh, winning coach. Yeah. Yep. So, Great yeah. recruiter, too. That's the fourth time. Yeah, he does. Um, but overall, from the NCAA, we haven't talked about that, right? That's... That's still up in the air, right? The big debates between the Big Twelve. You know, are we going to go with this or not go with this? And oh, they're going to play with without the, fans. They're going to go with something. If we on talk time, about it on time, though. If, if listen, if if Major League Baseball, the NHL, and NBA are coming back in J July, it why would stand, it would stand to reason the the? But these are college, the col college and NFL. But they're college campuses, though. Fine, I mean, they're you, you gonna got, be, they'll be. They're already putting tens and tens and hundreds of thousands of college. They're students. putting plans in place for this social distancing. They know it's not going to be full houses. They know we talked about Ohio State's already making contingency plans to let twenty thousand to fifty thousand in the horseshoe, which holds over a hundred thousand. What for the Michigan game or something? For any game. You know. Is it possible? We're gonna, home game. Is it possible we're going to see Ohio State, Michigan, which you and I have watched every one of those since we were, you know, wearing diapers? Yeah, it's more in front of an empty stadium in the Horseshoe or the Big House. No, with twenty to fifty thousand people. And is it possible? It, it's it's pretty much a <laughs> probable. Yeah. Okay. Highly probable. So, again, I mean, this whole But year, there's something that I, to, I told you, we talked before about NASCAR without fans. Really? Who cares? Right. Who cares? What about Oklahoma? But Michigan, Ohio State, without 112,000 or about, How about Army, Navy? Exactly. Is that in jeopardy? They're going to play. It's just a matter of there's not going to be 100 plus thousand people. It's just not going to happen. Well, then the only thing they could possibly have is cadets and, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> and midshipmen in, in the stands. That's right? it. Because there's always like 60,000 of them anyway, right? Right. <laughs> Good yeah. point. I forgot about that. But about 20 kegs on, uh, <laughs> on the cadet side and 20 kegs of beer uh, yep. for the middies. And uh, we shall see. Yep. Right? Oh, I mean, okay. golf is going to be back soon. It is coming back. Right. right? Um, I saw they were optimistic about playing the U.S. Open in September in New York, right? So right. Um, you're right, that's coming back, and I could see that without without fans. I, I could see that happening. That's not a problem for me. But that's starting to open up, and of course, obviously, we'd be uh, remiss if we didn't talk about the cornhole championships, which were on this morning. On yeah, ESPN. how'd that go? It, it went good. Um, they were wearing mask, uh, masks, so it was socially distant. Good. Couldn't tell you the names of the, the superstars. Yeah. You know, but they, you know, in their sport, they're heroes. 
Any nitro uh, gloves uh, required? Uh, rubber gloves. Yeah. Yeah, which probably altered some of them. Um, their tosses and so forth, but... You know, thank thank we, God we got ESPN to get us through this. They use rosin bags like pitchers. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see any rosin bags. But <laughs> time out. Like, time out for what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> time out. What? You're fatigued? <laughs> you're fatigued? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> Let's go to the video replay to see if that bean bag went Ooh, through the hole. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Should we offer turn? <laughs> Had to bring it up. It's the only. It, this what? wasn't. This wasn't. You know. Are you able to throw the red flag <laughs> if you if you want to? I challenge. <laughs> <laughs> How many challenges do you get to have the tournament? <laughs> He's got too many beans in that bag. <laughs> Whoa, they're gonna have to weigh that bag. Exactly. Pine <laughs> tar incident. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so listen, let's let's move on. Um, again, we're we're starving to talk about the sports of the day. Then when they're really happening, we're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. Um, but I, first and foremost, I want to uh, thank uh, thank and welcome uh, one of our new listeners, Mr. Paul Lawless, Paul Esquire, Lawless. Esquire from welcome. Rockland. Uh, excuse me. Um, Where'd your Aunt Pat live? Rockville Center. Rockville Center. Long Island. Yep. He's a well-respected man of the community and a Niagara camaraderie, uh, you know, comrade of ours. All right. And I just talked to him. He either he must have butt-dialed me, but I talked to him, but he's a new listener. And, of course, he's going to share it with his little his little clique, the Virgilios and the Shanks and the Wisemans and okay. all my other Niagara brethren. Well, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Welcome um, aboard. Yeah, big big lawyer in Rockville Center. Right, if you want to say his comment, Paul, and break chops. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, you're going to get an email from him because he's going to send it to sports with mono and mono at gmail.com. Bad, looking forward to it. Uh, welcome aboard, sailor. <laughs> okay, <laughs> buckle in. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> listen, before we. Uh, Wrap up. There's a couple of some some personal I want to bring up. I just found out last night, and I know Steve, you you've had some close friends that you've lost over the over the course of time and so forth, and how yeah. tragic it is. And I you know I just got an email last night from a dear friend of mine, Tom Pugh from Modesto, California. Right, works for Ernest and Julio Gallo Wineries. Okay, dear dear friend of mine. And his wife Susan just sent me a, a text last night. He suffered a massive heart attack a couple months ago, and he's in recovery and looking for a heart transplant. And you never see it. this guy rides bicycles 150 miles a day. Right. So you never know, what, you know, how precious life is until you find out something like that. You know, it took me it took me aback. I read it and I go, oh, that's why I didn't hear from him. Not because the guy was pissed at me or something, because he was recovering. Right. And I just wanted to, like I said, he's a dear, dear friend of mine, and he came over and spent the night over in, in Mawa, New Jersey, and he's a California guy, has a Ph.D. in analogy. Wow. Which I don't know if anybody out there has a friend that has a Ph.D. in analogy. It's, I guess it's a master winemaker or something. Okay. But out in Modesto, when my, when my daughter Nicole went out there, he sent me a thing of all the places to go out in Napa Valley and so forth. But I I was stunned by the news, but he, he he's going to be okay. He's a fighter, and he's a dear friend of mine, and I want to send that out to him and his family. Sure. Thoughts and prayers are with you, sir. Yep. Speedy recovery. He will. He will. Because he's a good man. He's good. Um, so... Um, one other thing, I let, we're going we're gonna to drive off the sports path into something that Steve and I, and we talked about it, right? Last week was Memorial Day and yep. how much that means. I had an opportunity to go down and meet the commander, the Ramsey, um, VFW, and so forth. Social right. distancing, of course, so of course. I couldn't exactly shake their hand, but I did have an opportunity year after year to go there. You could still salute them. No parade this year, so it was a little bit different. Um, 
But on uh, the History Channel, this this documentary on Ulysses S. Grant was was awesome. <laughs> and it's awesome because I've always thought the guy was awesome. And I'm currently finishing Ron Chernow's book. Ron Chernow is, is an established author, wrote the, the Hamilton book. I actually right. went and saw him speak and so forth. But the, this was a three-night, two, two hours a night documentary. One of the executive producer, although there were like 20 of them, yeah. was Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio, of yeah. all people. Oh, good. But it was awesome. I've seen episode one. I still got two more to go. And I'm with you, Ulysses S. Grant. is one of our, uh, you know, American hero. Uh, and they know. call him the, un, the, the forgotten hero because of the way there's a lot of things behind the scenes. But... This guy, and he ultimately went on and served two terms as U.S. president. Right. With a, he had he had the guys all around him. He was not a corrupt man, but no. his his presidency is considered corrupt because yeah, of because, the guys around him. Absolutely. I mean, anybody who researches Ulysses S. Grant knows his character, yeah. and uh, you know what he does. He fights, <laughs> and that's what Abe and Lincoln Jesus, said. Boy, did he fight! And they became very close at the end, which was. Yeah, yeah, awesome. you know, as and he was supposed to go to the theater and didn't go because the wives didn't get along, and this really happened. Right, you know? but Ulysses S. Grant, right, uh, his talent was when he walked onto a battlefield, he, you know, he was like Wayne Gretzky seeing the ice, right? And you knew what was coming. There were going to be tens of thousands of people killed but he knew, in order to grant you know, gain a, a, you know, and you know what? He knew he could he could see things, right? He could feel things out on the battlefield, and you know what? Got to the top rank general and uh, was instrumental, obviously. In, in, uh, the yep. World I mean, the only other um, general to become, you know, bestowed upon as as you know the head of the military since George Washington. Right. And. Listen, he's got nicknames, the butcher. I mean, guys lost lives. I know a lot about Robert E. Lee, believe it or not. You know, I had a picture of my office. People thought I was a racist. I go, no, I'm talking from a military perspective. Lee was pretty sharp, right? And you, Stephen, remember we had that picture hanging on our wall in our living room when we were growing up. Right. It didn't mean anything to us. Like, who is this guy in a uniform? And it was Robert E. Lee, and I, as I told you, Never forget the quote that was, you know, beneath it. Virginia is my country, her will I obey, however lamentable the fate to which it may subject me. Meaning, he was offered the, the head of the Union Army, and he said, I can't turn my back on Virginia. It's, it was. So, uh, but it's really awesome to watch. I highly recommend it. It's on History Channel. If yep. You can deal with and the you commercial. You can find it on demand. On, uh, it's free on demand, but definitely History Channel. And... Just again, we can't speak highly enough of Ulysses S. Grant. Yep, great stuff. And you just mentioned that you went to his. Um, yeah, I went to Grant's tomb recently. Uh, What's the location of that? On the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Upper uh, West Side. It's actually near Columbia, so. Uh, it's way up there. Yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it, if if you're in the area, you know him and his uh, his wife are buried there, and they're on. <laughs> Own tomb, so and just to did, and a little to, tiny museum, and just to emphasize how intense. It, I remember it was about twelve years ago. The New York Historical Society had an exhibit, Grant Lee exhibit, uniforms, saddles, swords. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> I literally went there by myself. Couldn't find anybody that was interested. I'm going. Okay, maybe I'm a dork, but I'm going. And I went and never forget it. Never forget it. And we think of General Grant. He was a small man. You should have saw this uniform. I couldn't get into that uniform. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that much I know. Right. <laughs> um, so, Steve, let's um, move on to our notable passings, right? right because this that, is some... the last segment we just dis discussed is sponsored by our another sponsor, De Filippi's Bakery up in Monticello. Loyal sponsor. Was doing good stuff, right? During yeah. this crazy pandemic, and we hope their efforts are I at least being I, appreciated. I, I hope I hope they're doing well, and uh, I know uh, she's busy, and uh, and she's delivering meals and making meals, and you know, yeah. 
Is that a GoFundMe page? GoFundMe page. Find on DeFilippi's uh, website. Okay. Um, so notable passings. <laughs> Lead us off, partner. Well, you know, the last couple weeks we've been flooded with notable passings, I tell you that, unfortunately. Yeah, you said last week was a record week. Uh, right? I think it tied a, tied a previous record. Okay. I think it's five is our record. But anyway, uh, we'll start off with uh, Eddie Sutton, one of your all-time favorite favorite uh, coaches. And I know you bring it. that up tongue in cheek. I do, um, but, you know, eight, and yours too. I could say I could have said the same exact thing to you, and you were to go, "You're right." No doubt, he's got what the fourth all-time winning as coach in NCAA. Yeah, he's got like eight hundred and sixty-four-ish yep. victories, something along those lines. We just talked about him a few weeks ago. Yeah, well, but we, we, before, we, I didn't know he was sick we, in his past. We, we didn't talk glowingly of him, put it that way. We did not. So, I mean, he's prominent. I think he's the only coach to take four teams to the tournament. His most famous is, is uh, Arkansas, Kentucky, Oklahoma State, or, or the three yep. uh, main uh, universities that he led. But you know, but he left a trail of dirty breadcrumbs. If, if, oh, he did. If I could use that term, you, you know, can. Um, because like I said, we when we 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 talk about NCAA, we know how difficult it is. But Robert Montgomery Knight and Dean Smith, you know, Shashevsky, kids wanted to come here. Where Eddie Sutton went, he had to pull them there, right? right and and offer them something, <laughs> right? Not to the level and of all Rick. Bobby Knight and Dean Smith's offered was the chance to play for right. Indiana and North Carolina. Right, and get a college degree. But with Eddie Sutton and the you know uh, the Jim Valvanos and so forth, which by the way I did see him on an old repeat of Johnny Carson, and he was very very funny. <laughs> but as a basketball coach, we know the behind the scenes, the selling of the sneakers and all sure. that kind of. All the all the equipment and stuff that was and coming. And it still to, goes on, right? Uh, but maybe Eddie's, not to the level of Rick Pitino and uh, having a whorehouse next to the university. <laughs> <but> allegedly, <laughs> <laughs> allegedly, the new coach of Iona. Iona, right, right. So, but no, it's it's no worth noting that he's he's got, I think the fourth. It, yeah, 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 he's he, up there he, all the time. He is. He, he coached a long time, but he worn out his welcome everywhere he went, and and that's what happened. He when, never won a national championship. When the feds are closing in on you, you 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 resign, and then you get hired by another prominent school and, and do and the same thing. That's exactly right. So you know Eddie Sutton, R.I.P. Um, coached many years, decades. Coached a ton of players. His son Sean, um, I think he's a head coach somewhere. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm losing. Uh, Trying to remember where he, he's moving. He around. played for him at Oklahoma State. I he think, did, right? Yeah. yeah. So notable passing, Eddie Sutton, college basketball. Okay. And then finally, uh, Mr. <laughs> Wilhelm uh, from uh, Seinfeld <laughs> passed away this week. He's got he's got a broader resume than that, but that's, that's last George. Week. You'll find the answer <laughs> downtown. George, it's all downtown. <laughs> <laughs> you must go downtown. <laughs> Mr. Wilhelm from Seinfeld. My name isn't Mr. Wilhelm. <laughs> they call me Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> Appeared on 12 episodes of Seinfeld. Okay. 12. Well, he's been in a thousand things, too. Uh, we brought up uh, <laughs> Howard Duff last week. Right, you find Mr. Wilhelm on a Matlock to uh, a Barnaby Jones to. Uh, but he was also in all the President's Men. He was China Syndrome. He I was. Believe. Yeah, yeah, he had some good role. You know, very character good actor. You know, supporting guy. Exactly. But uh, no doubt, very very funny on the Seinfeld. Oh, he was know, great. Played this, you know, losing his mind old, you know, corporate guy yep. for the Yankees. Yep. Very, very funny. And, you know, we, you know, Kru, uh, Mr. Kruger passed away. God, it's got to be three years now for him, right? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we talked about Jerry Stiller, Frank Costanza. Yep. Uh, so, you know, unfortunately, you know, time gets us all at some point. So. It sure does. But R.I.P. Mr. Wilhelm. That was a good one, right? Yeah. Like I said, you can see that we like to we, we like to acknowledge quality acting, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, 
When you think of Seinfeld, it, 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 the one episode I think goes completely unappreciated is the one with at the uh, the bris. Oh yeah. And the rabbi. You know, See where you put that glass? <laughs> you had to put it on the very end of the table. <laughs> you flinched. <laughs> Flincher. <laughs> that guy should have won an Oscar. <laughs> what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Look, yeah. look, he flinched. <laughs> I should have been a butcher. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but let's just, we want to certainly acknowledge those guys, and this was funny stuff. Oh, absolutely. Very, very funny stuff. Um, and before we sign off, like I said, when we see guys that we used to watch as, as kids, and uh, I saw an NFL football life on John Riggins. Rigo? Character. But I remember my brother Absolutely. Thomas saying he went, he met him one night, went up to him and said, hey, we appreciate it. And the guy was a total D-bag. Yeah. Huh? Yeah? Oh, he had to be loaded. Oh, he was piled. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Riggins, Riggins was famous for... Uh, I know, but I'm not gonna I'll never forget it. Thomas, correct <laughs> me if I'm wrong. He goes, I was so disappointed that we worshipped this guy. And you are a douche. <laughs> <laughs> you are now on the list. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but Reagan's had a good career. It was pretty cool. I didn't realize he played five years for the Jets. Yeah, five. Number forty-four. Yeah, got the Mohawk and so forth. Yeah. But again, we appreciate quality broadcasting. It was John Reagan's and that Super Bowl he had to run, right? Don McNeil. Yeah. That's the Isaiah Robertson getting right. Uh, yeah, the main Reagan's. Uh, Earl know, Campbell. Shadow. Shadow. Uh, yep. You know, and then off to the races he went. And Riggins obviously wasn't, uh, you know, Bob Hayes' speed, but Riggins was just a big power back and ran you over. But some of the footage I saw from the, him running for the Jets, yeah, he was hard to catch. Hell yeah! I mean, so he had he had speed that didn't didn't look like yeah. he looked like he was moving like a, like Riggins, a diesel truck. Riggins I mean. played at Kansas, if I'm not mistaken. You're correct. And obviously the Washington Redskins after the uh, the New York Jets. Yeah. But, but uh, wasn't a fan, you know, wasn't a fan of the media. The media resented him and yeah. always gave him a bad rap. But the Super Bowl against the Dolphins, forget it. Yeah. Classic run, Don McNeil falling off yeah. him like uh, ice in a yeah, spring yeah. thaw day, right? Yep, yeah. Joe Gibbs. Yep. Oh, playing for that man would be pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. So listen, you know, thanks for joining us this week. And we, we, we sure do appreciate it. And, and we look forward to you hearing again. Welcome Paul Lawless and Paul, say hi you. to some of our fans. Kramer and Tom Kramer out in California. I know his son is feeling the effects of it because he can't go out and play baseball either. So, uh, and Mike Garvey in, in Naples. So yeah. we got the whole, and speedy recovery, my friend Tom Pugh. Well, my Boston University buddies, uh, shout out to them, say hello. Yep. I was actually supposed to head up there uh, first week of May, and uh, could, couldn't do it. Wouldn't have been prudent. Wouldn't be prudent. <laughs> <laughs> so, unfortunately, that trip was... Uh, All right, so we're feeling the effects, yeah, too. You yeah, know. yeah. And, supposed uh, to be a reunion year for me in college, too. Looks like that's going to get tabled. Could be a virtual reunion. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> It's called text messaging, right? Right. right. But listen, can no. I have another virtual pig in the blanket? <laughs> when does the virtual filet mignon come out? <laughs> uh, but anyway, listen, stay in touch with us. Send us an email at sports with mono and mono at gmail.com uh, we'd love to hear from you especially our new listeners and, sure and again I'm reaching out to Tony where are you I haven't heard Johnny. from you in a while Tony I'm back Tony Tony but well, let's all give a shout out to Cliff Olander Cliff uh, yes you know very loyal Cliff, Cliff absolutely appreciate you your loyalty every week and uh, Good check call. us out on YouTube Cliff and uh, Cliff's a Jersey guy and uh you know, maybe at some point, Cliff. Uh, I know. I know you reached out to me. Oh, yeah, like kind of when we first started. And uh, listen, yeah, Jim and I. You know, you ever want to go meet for a beer or something, man? 
Definitely. Absolutely. Okay. Every week I get it. We get an email from Cliff saying, you know, the show is good. Absolutely. So thank, thank you, you Cliff. Good call. Okay. But take care, everybody, and we'll catch up to you next week. It'll be June. Yep. And uh, on we go. You bet. Have yep. a great weekend, everybody. Talk to you next week. Yep. A lot will happen between now and then. We'll catch up to you guys. Bye. Bye.